All right, everybody, welcome to the second episode of Full Draw the Series presented by Onyx Hunt. We're here in the Dallas Fort Worth area camping in our Project M by Four Wheel Campers, and we're getting ready to leave for our show down in Austin, Texas. In this episode, we got stuck in the rut. They're going on a moose hunt, and the Higher Calling Adventures, they're bringing us the challenge. Stick around to the end of the episode, and you guys can see what gear we're giving away. That's pretty good. Nailed it. All right, here's our Black Rifle Coffee stuff. We have five Black Rifle Coffee Coffee Club subscriptions, and we've got five coffee kits. We've got a tumbler, a bag of just black coffee, and a box of instant sticks, which are great for any backcountry hunter or a hunter on the go. All right, that's Black Rifle Coffee. All right, for EXO, we're giving away three packs, uh, one of each size. They're smaller, 1800, the 3200, and this is a 4800. Check out exomountaingear.com. Benchmade sent us four meat crafters. Great knife, designed specifically for breaking down your game once you get back home. Good luck. Yeah. 
My God, is it beautiful out here. Hello, I'm Tana with Stuck in the Rut and I really, really hope you enjoy this archery moose hunt that I did. This was a super important hunt to me. It's been on my bucket list for years and years and years to do an Alaska moose with a bow and I've shot a few Alaskan moose, but I really wanted to do it archery. And kind of ironically, I was in full draw film tour a couple of years, a couple of years ago with an archery brown bear in Alaska. And that was kind of my, um, my goal to overcome my fear of brown bears. So well, last year I had a pretty traumatic experience with a brown bear, um, where I almost died from one. And so this hunt was my reintroduction back into the wilderness just a few months after that experience. So it has a lot of meaning to me. I hope you guys enjoy the video. This was kind of like an archery or bust for me. I didn't care how big he was. I just wanted to get back out there, have a bow in hand and refuse to use the rifle this time. So I hope you guys enjoy this film. anxiously awaited the morning for my hopefully archery moose opportunity. So to give a recap of what just happened, we woke up this morning to some raging winds and it was kind of pushing in this fog layer. So I said, let's go glass right now before the fog rolls in. So we get out of our tent. We don't even have our backpacks or anything really, just binos. And we <laughs> walk maybe 50 to 100 yards from the airplane and there's two bulls within a couple hundred yards of the airplane so like okay so i run back and i get my bow and the gun and then the bull that we saw last night that we were looking at that i said i would shoot with my bow came down the hill with a couple cows so now there's three bulls a couple cows all within about 300 yards of the airplane so we just kind of sat there we're pinned in the, in the middle of the wide open so we decide, well, we can't really make a move in. Might as well see if they'll come to us. So Adam started calling. I was hiding behind a rock. And the cows took off running. And so the big bull took off running after the cows. But one of the other bulls, who's probably like 60, just your average good bull, um, came <laughs> grunting in. And I had an arrow knocked. I was waiting for him to get to 50 because I had a really stiff crosswind. And uh, he came to about 80 yards and just, I don't know if he saw the airplane or what. Um, he couldn't have smelled us. And he just turned around and ran away. So I had an arrow knocked. I was ready to, to give him an arrow right next to our camp, but it didn't pan out. So we are just kind of glassing, taking our time. We've seen a ton of moose today. Lots of bulls, nothing crazy huge, but lots of small ones, a few mediocre, lots of cows but they just disappear in this brush so quickly. So we're just gonna spend our time glassing today. It's pretty windy, <coughs> um, so calling's difficult, but if we can see one with some cows, or maybe they bed, we can maybe make a move in. So really nice day overall, other than the wind. It's pretty cold, but it's a cool experience. We had an arrow knocked within an hour of waking up this morning. I spotted a bull and Adam passed on it, so it was my opportunity to take it with a bow. So I got my stuff ready and I started running in as he was putting his head in the brush while Adam stayed back to call. Oh. 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 Well, I'm stuck in the willows. This moose won't come at all. Dan is trying to sneak in. See if she can get a shot and I'll keep him occupied, I hope. It took a minute for us to get the bull's attention to start coming my way and once he did I just dropped down in a little canyon to cross to the other side but what I was noticing is he wasn't wanting to go to Adam he was coming toward my direction so I was just watching him and quickly stalking to close the distance as quickly as I possibly could.
was all very hectic, but basically we saw a bull from pretty far away, but he was kind of working his way towards us. So I got into position as he was kind of running into some trees and allers. Adam stayed back to call, and he just wasn't budging. He was staying in the bushes. He wouldn't move. He was just kind of staying there. I could see his horn flashing, and I was right above this little creek crossing and, and little canyon to get up to him. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to take my chances that he's not going to come this way toward me. I'm going to have to go to him. So I crossed the little creek, went through the canyon, got up on the other side, and right as soon as I got up there, I was in this open little ridge, and I was like, I gotta get behind a bush. So I go run behind an older bush, and I see Adam pointing, and I look up, and the bull's in the wide open, like 100 yards from me, running at me. So I get behind the little alder bush that I have, and he keeps calling, and it's like running, and then it stops, and it's running, and then it stops, and then pretty soon he just starts walking right towards me, like he knows I'm right behind the bush, and I don't know how, or if he knew I was there, or if he thought I was a bull and heard me crashing coming up on the other side, most likely he did, and he just came to, <laughs> to fight me, and uh, I, I came full draw, he was like less than 20 yards coming at me. He kind of looked at Adam as Adam called, so I had a broadside shot there, but I was behind the bush and I couldn't see him. So I had to step out behind the bush in the wide open, and he just kind of jolted, saw a little bit of movement from me, and turned the other way, slightly quartering to me, and that was my only shot before he saw me and busted. And I, Cause I was less than 20 yards standing in the open, just like peeking out from the bush. So I gave him an arrow at less than 20 yards and it hit right where I wanted it to. I keep looking at the video, I tucked it right behind the shoulder, but it angled back, <clears throat> angled back just because he was quartering to me. Uh, we found him bedded, he hasn't died yet, but we're just gonna give him time. I know I got a good shot, it wasn't perfect, but hopefully enough to get him down. As archery hunting goes sometimes, I gave the bull the night and hoped to find him first thing in the morning. Oh, burr, it's cold. So this is my little bush I was hiding behind from a monster moose. And I was watching him run at me through this, and I couldn't tell which way I should go. But then he eventually came down. I think he heard me crashing through the brush right there. So he was coming to meet me. But Adam was over there calling, and so he'd like run toward me and then stop and then look over at Adam and then run and stop. And so finally he stopped right about there, 15 yards away. He just ranged it. And I came full draw before I could even see him. And I had to back up and shoot him as soon as I saw his body, and I just whirled and took off. I can't believe it, but <laughs> I finally got my archery bull moose that I've been trying to get for several years. And it wasn't looking good. I shot him last night and he couldn't find him. So we gave him the night, tracked him all morning, couldn't find him. It was just not looking very good. And then he ended up bedding down and dying in this tree patch here. Man, just so pumped to have this down and we just wanted to get it cut up real quick because it was a warm day, get the meat up, and then I realized we didn't do a recap. But all in all, you'll see it in the video. I shot it at 15 yards. He was actually quartered to me a lot more than I expected. So I thought I got lungs, but it was further back than I wanted it to. So it just took him a bit to die, but you live and learn. And sometimes you have a split second to see a bull and shoot it. <laughs> you don't have time to think, you don't have time to really judge the situation you just react so I'm really pumped thank you hon we're gonna pack was, him out thought it was gonna trample her <laughs> yeah he almost threw me over coming in hot yeah now the packing starts okay update this is really our day two but day one yesterday i shot the moose today we found the moose 
cut it up, packed half of it out to a shuttle strip where Adam will have to do shuttles to a bigger strip to take the whole thing out. So we've got another day of work ahead of us. We made it back to camp just before sunset. And yeah, it just feels good to have found the bowl and have half of him packed out already by day two. And tomorrow we're gonna get the rest and fly out and go home. Now the airplane's all thawed out from the sun, so we're getting ready to pack up camp and go get the rest of the moose and head home. Our water filter broke and we're so thirsty and it's gonna be a hot day. So uh, Adam is filling up out of this moose swamp here and hope that the iodine kills whatever bacteria there is so we don't get Gerardia. Did you taste it yet? <laughs> Probably. Put lots of iodine in that one. Double dose. So we're gonna put these in here and it's gonna taste just like a garden hose. Don't you drop those. Ooh, get the powder. That's for extra Giardia flavor. What do you got, bud? Packing out the last rear quarter. I'm trying not to fall on my face. It's kind of heavy. Put your back into it, woman. Shake the booty. There you go. shimmy between these trees. <laughs> Don't hit your husband. Oh. Give me a turn. Which way? To the right. Keep going all the way around. Oh, nice bull. Nice bull. You did it. You did it. Now it's my time to do some work. The meat and the horns. It feels really good to be done packing. We are all done. Adam is doing shuttles now. So we got all the meat here and he's just shuttling out a couple corners at a time. A short, tight, bumpy, downhill spot. And yeah, then we're gonna go home. Kind of crazy. I love the quiet and the stillness of Moose Camp, but I'm excited to go see my kids. So my body's tired. My mind is tired after nearly a whole day of trying to track the thing and find him. And lots of bugs out now. We have beautiful weather. It was 24 degrees and frosty this morning and now it's t-shirt weather, a t-shirt. So couldn't ask for better weather. It's really beautiful. It's the last meat load. So he is gonna drop that, come back and get me and everything else. And that's a wrap.
掉。Thank you so much for watching this year's Full Draw Film Tour. We're so blessed to be on our third consecutive tour with our films. So proud of that. Um, so excited to be a part of this year's um, this year's program. I'm gonna, let me just tell you a little bit about Hire to Call in Adventures. My name's Kevin Bunce, and me and my good friend and his hunting partner Greg Wiggins um, start, started Hire to Call in Adventures. Now, Cheyenne McKeldry, um, my friend of 21 plus years, he's the one who got me into archery elk hunting. And then he introduced me to his uh, hunting partner, Greg Wiggins. And Greg and I are now really good friends, just love hunting with both of those guys. They're great callers, shooters, cameramen, um, and have learned videography here alongside with me. And, um, you know, so that, like I said, this is our third consecutive year in full draw film tour. Our first film was the making of an epic hunting film where we kind of poked fun a little bit about um, just all the things that go into making a hunting film and the b-roll and all that stuff it was kind of a fun fun video that one came out during COVID year so no live events that year and then our second um, film on the full draw film tour was called the year of first now the year of first was an amazing story very hard to put together I was emotional um, definitely recommend you go check out both of those films they're a lot of fun to put together for you and this third year is called the challenge and the challenge is about well you're just gonna have to stay and watch that it's a great story also um, just an epic hunt uh, happened on opening day in Panhandle North Idaho on public land and uh, anyways it's a great great to be a part of this and we thank you for watching and if you like our content so here's the thing about our content is you're never gonna hear swear words on our channel and you're never gonna see things that you want to cover your kids eyes for um, that's really what Higher Calling Adventures is about. It's about doing the right thing, always taking the high road. So we appreciate you watching. Come like our channel, hit that subscribe button. Appreciate you. Thank you. With the season winding down, an opportunity finally presented itself. And just like that, a new season began the off season. As the snow continued to pile up, it wasn't long until my mind wandered back to the days of September and all of the places we like to hunt, like the money stand, the short skid road, flat tire corner, and big poop. But as I step outside, I'm reminded that it's winter. The days are short and the nights are long. And it's during this time every year that I send my hunting partners the challenge. Area. It's kind of a challenge I said for Cheyenne and Kevin is to get out this year, find some place new. And so uh, I had no clue where I was heading today. Whoa, 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 bear, whoa, 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 bear, go, go away, you go away, go. Whew. Well, that was fun. When I returned in August to check the trail cameras, I realized I'd found something special. I felt like I had accomplished the off-season challenge. I wondered what name we'd give this new hunting spot. Perhaps the mud bugs, or possibly the wolf wallow. Maybe we'd have an encounter at Mr. Big's place. All of our hunting spots earn their nickname, and Stinger earned its name day one. I'm not sure how, but we walked through a yellow jacket's nest of some sort. I got stung five times. You have to get out the EpiPen. Use the EpiPen on the side of the hill. Ran into another yellow jacket nest. Um, Kevin got the worst of it this time. I probably had about 10. I only got one. The challenge of Stinger proved to be thick and remote. That's all the way in. We still have to walk back. We had to contend with wolves and hunters. And Doug Flutie. We want to be those guys that are just like, hey, we had that out first, which we did. 
but there was one thing that always kept us coming back. Oh, that's him there. There's so many balls, we're just not really sure which way to go. It's actually part of the problem with stingers. So, so part of the problem with stingers are so many balls in different pockets is trying to find out which ones to go for. The story of my life, they're on the other ridge. Like that side and that side, but not on this one. And yesterday we were on that one and they were on this ridge and on that ridge. <laughs> oh, we've come close, but came up empty every time. We even tried packing in tree stands. Today is September 29th and uh, I'm sitting in a tree stand. And, um, I honestly came into the season with the hopes of trying to shoot my first six by six. I've had a lot of six by six in front of me through the years, but just for whatever reason, they've always managed to live. And uh, I set out a goal to try to get that done this year and I could still get it done right here tonight. Y'all have in reaches, so we've been communicating like that. Cheyenne, uh, sounds like he had like a camera arm fiasco this morning. But this year, the thermals began to shift. We don't know what's going on with Kevin. He's still over there dinking around this tent. So Cheyenne and I decided to go for a round of uh, rock, paper, scissors. And since Kevin wasn't here, we put a ghost runner in for him. And, uh, you know, believe it or not, <laughs> Cheyenne and I lost. So Kevin's up. He's shooter today. Uh, Cheyenne's gonna do the calling and I'll be on the camera and we're gonna go see if we can get it done See if we can get Kevin on a big bowl today. So. Frustrated by this challenge. We decided Stinger needed new tactics I got Paul Downloaded and he's gonna show it. Hi, I'm Paul with Elknet Outdoors And in this video clip here, we're gonna talk about the advertising sequence and one of our favorite times to use Paul, don't let me down. What I have here are the elk nut sequences, cliff notes. We're gonna start with advertising bugles, raking, thrashing, stomp. Advertising bugles, raking, thrashing, don't stomp. Just raking, thrashing. And then we got advertising bugles. Then you thrash, then rake. And then be creative with the bugles. It's not just like wee, wee, wee. You get some whiny stuff in there too. And then pause now and then and listen. Rarely do they come in loudly. He wants to see you to establish the pecking order. So, here we go. Sort of cold calling, advertising sequence. It's early. It's August 30th. We know there's bulls in the area. We have pictures of them. Our setup of the season. Paul Modell's, uh, his secret sauce. After several years of archery success, 
I connected with my good friend Cheyenne and his longtime hunting partner Greg, and we began our journey as higher calling adventures together. Stinger brought many challenges, but also many opportunities at six point bulls. In fact, we had never seen a raghorn there the first few years, only mature bulls. It was right about here we laid our eyes on this bull for the very first time at 60 yards. Man, he looked big. Would this be the moment we conquer Stinger and my challenge to get a big six? And Stinger. Shots fired at Stinger. <laughs> so it's just like this place has kicked my butt for years. And it's been like that spot where it's just like I just gotta, gotta figure it out, you know? Just gotta, I can't let it win. I can't let it win. And so I just wanna, I didn't wanna give up. I just want, can't let this win. We gotta figure it out. We gotta figure it out. <laughs> uh. My knees were shaking so bad. Also. When that bull bugled, I heard you guys moo. And then I just waited, waited, and didn't hear anything. I didn't know he was even there. I still thought he was on the other side. I thought that bull was on the other side. And so, <laughs> he was like, and then all of a sudden I hear whack. I'm like, I know what that sound is. This is where the shot was right here. Oh, we got good blood. Good blood. All the way through. All the way through. Yeah, that's a thing of beauty right there. Blood. It's him there, though. Just keep following that trail, buddy. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. <laughs> Is it there? <laughs> oh, I love you, buddy. We did it. Oh, yes. God. Oh my goodness. Oh. Oh, my goodness. Look at you. Oh, dude. Look at you. Oh my gosh. 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 Are you kidding me? <laughs> There's a beast. Oh. Wow. Look at that boy. Dude. Let's 
Nope. <laughs> 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 oh you my are. goodness, he is a What a toad, oh my gosh. In 2021, we broke through the challenge of Stinger and myself the challenge of harvesting a six point bull. With 2018's challenge finally met and the struggles of Stinger pushed through, the off season gives us opportunity to share our story. The story of Stinger. Pretty hard. But the stories I'll be able to tell around this bowl for years to come. Opening day, August 30th, over the counter tag. We ran a script, not one cow call. Shane bugled that bull across the basin, came right in. When I get him mounted and he's put up on the wall, it's not about the trophy on the wall, it's about telling that story. And stories are special. Special memories that you get to share with other people who weren't there. And my brothers who were there. Good job, buddy. We did it. Hey, everybody. I got a tracking challenge for you. See if you could find us on YouTube and Rumble, like our channels, hit the subscribe button, and check out our new shenanigans series. Guarantee you're gonna crack up. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks for watching. Check out the next episode here. If you want to see a bonus episode featuring Outfitters for Hope and how to win this e-bike, check it out here. To get entered for all of our giveaways coming up, click the link here. All right, good luck this fall.